Hi everyone, my name is Ellen Anderson and I'm a pediatric speech language pathologist here at Professional Therapy Associates and also work in preschool. And today's parent education topic that I chose was introduction to AAC and core vocabulary, empowering your child's communication. So what is AAC? AAC stands for alternative and augmentative communication. And really all that is, is any kind of communication that helps children express their needs to you if they can't sufficiently use verbal speech. AAC can be used to replace or alternate or alternative or supplement augmentative verbal speech. So what are some types of AAC? So AAC can be low tech, meaning that there's no battery required. It's simply paper, pieces of paper. So the picture exchange communication system or PECS would be a low tech option. That would not be my first choice and my mindset has really shifted on that over the past couple of years and we're gonna talk more about that. Uh, or symbol based core vocabulary boards, which is what I've really shifted to in, in my practice and something that's really, really easy to implement and we're gonna talk about that. And I find incredibly beneficial. AAC can be high tech, which requires a battery and would look like a speech generating device. So let's look at some examples. So this is an example of a PEX book or a PEX binder. And you can see that there are individual pictures on this board and there's pictures of bubbles and cereal and a ball and balloons. And really this book teaches children how to make requests for highly motivating items. And what I find a little bit limiting with PECS, it's really limited to requesting. And there's so much more to language than just requesting. Also, it's a little bit arduous and cumbersome to keep up with the pictures and keep them all maintained and not getting lost. So there are some um, drawbacks to PECS, but it is an option. This is what I prefer as an introduction to AAC, and this is a core board. And you can see it's just a piece of paper that's been laminated, and you can see the child's finger here and the adult across, and the adult points and models to symbols on this board, and the child but it hopefully will start to point to these, to these symbols once they learn their meaning. This is an example of a high-tech speech generating device. This system uh, here is an example of touch chat, which is very popular and what a lot of students who get a speech generating device go on to use this. It's not for everyone. There are plenty of systems out there. And I really recommend that an AAC specialist does an evaluation with your child to determine which program is best. And we'll talk about more about that later. Um, options include LAMP, touch chat, proloquo to go. And what I, since touch chat is so popular, I use a screenshot of, of touch chat with my students so that I'm teaching them these symbols and uh, what they mean. So if they get a high tech speech generating device in the future, they've kind of already learned uh, the layout of this program. So who would benefit from AAC? So a child who is non-speaking or not speaking at all would absolutely benefit from AAC. Maybe a child who is talking but not talking as much as we would like them to would definitely benefit from AAC. A child who is talking but maybe their speech is very unclear and difficult to understand. So if a child has childhood apraxia of speech or a significant speech sound disorder where you're having difficulty understanding them, they might be able to use AIC to clarify their message so that they don't get so frustrated when they're not understood. Or maybe if a child is autistic and uses scripting, like repeating lines from movies, um, from YouTube, singing songs to themselves, or maybe they're really good at saying nouns and labeling things. They know their shapes, their colors, their letters, their numbers. They can label lots of different vocabulary. I'm working with a, a young three-year-old right now who can tell me, it's a sweet potato, it's a green plant. Really, his vocabulary is just limited to labeling. So we want to expand on that. So again, children with autism, with genetic syndromes, with childhood apraxia of speech, with other speech and language disorders, 
a traumatic brain injury or other developmental delays could benefit from AAC. But I want my child to talk. Of course, we all want children to talk, and that's our number one goal. And rest assured that AAC will not slow down a child from learning to use spoken language, but instead can be an invaluable tool to help a child's communication development. There's so much research in this area. So the, using AAC will either help increase verbal speech or it'll keep them where they are. It's not going to make them regress in any way. And there's tons of research on that. And AAC might be temporary. Uh, so, for example, I've, I've worked with hundreds of preschoolers who have started with AAC and by the time they're going off to kindergarten, they're no longer using it, which is great. Um, and sometimes they might need to continue to use it when they go to kindergarten and throughout their life, and that's okay too. So I really wanna discuss core vocabulary and the importance of core vocabulary. So what is core vo vocabulary? 80% of what we say in a day comes from a small bank of 400 to 500 core words. These are high frequency words that are essential for effective communication. And I like to refer to core vocabulary words as kind of bang for your buck words. These are words that I would um, really start with young toddlers who I'm trying to get them to use words. These are the types of words that I would target. And 20% of what we say in a day comes from a bank of thousands and thousands of fringe words. So let's look at examples. So core words are words like on, go, open, stop, help, play, have, off, want, turn, more, up, down, in, out, eat, drink, no, don't. These are words that whether we're Young children or geriatric, we never stop using these words every single day. And fringe words are more specific nouns and verb, uh, nouns and verbs. Yeah, like Elmo, Pirate Booty, Peppa Pig, Hibernate, Paul Revere, Cookie, Jupiter, Photosynthesis. The the options for fringe words is are endless, and fringe words can be really important too. I don't want to demonize fringe words because if Peppa Pig is really, really important word for your child. That's okay, and we want to teach that too. But it might not be where I start. So, what are some benefits of core vocabulary? Versatility. So, we have tons of opportunities to teach, demonstrate, and use core vocabulary all day, every day, across different activities, environments, and people. Core words are consistent, making it easier for our children to learn and use them which is great for children who might have intellectual disabilities. These words are consistent. That's great. Uh, expansion. So core vocabulary words are powerful as either a single word. So the word eat is a very powerful word um, just, just on its own. But we can easily create uh, phrases using core words as children develop their communication. Like, I don't like to eat that <laughs> or um let i need help will be another uh example of a phrase that we can create using core vocabulary words so how do aac and core vocabulary work together aac st systems whether they're low tech options or high tech incorporate core vocabulary to facilitate communication and core vocabulary forms the backbone of AAC systems. It allows individuals to construct sentences, like I said, express their emotions, and engage in meaningful interactions. So let's think about how we use language in general. So we use language to request, and that's often a really big um, goal for our students is, is learning how to request things that they want. But there are so many other ways that we can communicate with one another. So complain. We all like to complain, right? Who doesn't like to complain? We like to direct the actions of others. So, hey, look, look at that. Or come here, come here. Um, We like to protest or refuse and say, no, we don't want to do that. We don't like that. We share a story with our friends. We make a comment on what we're seeing around us like, wow, it's big, so cool, so fast. Um, <clears throat> we use greetings and partings like, hi, how are you? Bye, see you later. 
And of course, another big one is asking for help. And there's so many other things that we uh, use in our everyday language functions. So how do we support our child's language journey? So as, as parents and professionals, we all play a crucial role in supporting your child's communication development. And I'm gonna talk more about this, but if you take anything away from this presentation, I hope you learn the importance of modeling during everyday interactions. Model, model, model some more when it comes to AAC. Provide opportunities for your child to practice using AAC systems and celebrate their communication attempts and successes. So what does this look like in real life? So this is a screenshot of the core board that I use in my classrooms and preschool and with many of the children that I work with in therapy. And I have this board, just on a printout, eight and a half by 11 laminated. And I also have it blown up big on the wall. Uh, so uh, staff members and teachers can model on, on the wall these words. So let's look at some of these words on this board. Let's see if I can um, click on it or draw on it. Let's see. Let's look at the word eat. Okay, so I just circled eat. So if I was using this and it was snack time, I would point to the word eat on this board and say, oh, it's time to eat. Mm, I'm hungry. Let's eat. And that's all I'm doing is just modeling that word eat. Um, let's look at the next word. Let's do one in red. How about the word play? See this here? So I would point to the word play. Oh, we're gonna play. I'm pointing to play. We're gonna play with toys. Let's play some blocks. So I am pointing to the word and we're playing with toys while I'm pointing to that word. Um, let's try the word help. See this here, help. So <clears throat> I could point to the word help when a child cannot access a toy, or maybe they're trying to operate a wind-up toy, or they're trying, they need help um, putting their jacket on. I can model that word. I need some help. Uh, another really important word would be the word watch. Let's face it. Who doesn't like to watch YouTube these days? So we can model the word watch. Oh, let's watch. And pointing to the word watch, let's watch Coco Melon. Um, how about another important word like go? Go is a really important one that we can model so many different situations. Let's say we're pl playing with a car going down a ramp and we're just going to, we have the car ready, set. And I'm pointing to the word go on my core board. Or maybe we're about to go outside and go for a walk. So I might use that big board in my classroom and say, it's time to go for a walk. Let's go. And all I'm doing is um, demonstrating these words and teaching these words to children and modeling and modeling and modeling. I'm not making the child do anything other than exposing them and immersing them in these to these words. So let's look at some other examples on this board. I have words like I up here, sorry, uh, don't, not, Go, eat, need, read, stop, turn, want, walk, open, look, act, drink, finish is a big one. Whenever we finish speech, oh, speech is all finished. Sometimes I have kids point to finish before we're, we're finished and I acknowledge them. Oh, I know you want to be finished. We have a little bit more work to do. We have to play, but then we're going to be all finished. I like how you're telling me. Uh, where, put, in, on, up out, down, here, yes, no, more. So these are words that I use uh, every day in my preschool. So here's some more examples of, of activities that we could use core words with. Like I mentioned, YouTube videos. So we can model the word watch, more, stop. So if I stop the YouTube video, I'm modeling the word stop on the core board. If we're on the swing, oh, this is a big one, especially at PTA, everybody loves the swing. So we can model words like stop and go. If we're going to the playground, 
we're modeling the words up, down, go, stop. Oh, we're gonna go for a walk to the playground. We're gonna go out, we're gonna go outside. Um, Playing with the farm, words like play, in, out, up and down. So if I'm taking my cow or my pig and we're opening the door and we're putting him in the farm, I can model in or I can model out. If we're making the animals climb up, we can model the word up. And we feel down, modeling the word down. Bubbles, um, we can model the word want, more, help. They all need help with that bubble one, let's be honest. Um, snack time, of course. Snack time would be a great opportunity to model the words open with for their containers or their their lunchbox. On, oh, I see you need. Let's open your lunchbox. It's time to open your snack. Or of course, modeling the word eat. Oh, I left off drink would be another uh, core word to model during snack time. And wind up toys are great. Uh, ways to model the word turn like let's turn it on turn 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 ready set bottle go 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 it stopped i need help those are words that i'm modeling while playing with that toy so how can we support aac at home we want to create communication temptations and a communication rich environment. And communication temptations just mean not doing everything for your child as soon as they need it. Allowing them to um, ask for help when they need, when they can't put their shoe on. I need, don't just put their shoe on for them. Let them, now it's an opportunity to model the word. Um, when a child is, wants their drink, don't just hand them their drink. Let's model the word drink first. Uh, or open and with for example play-doh keeping that container and not, not just opening that container for them modeling the word open encourage family members and caregivers to use AAC I don't want to just use it in my speech session I really really try to get staff members on board with this approach and I feel like once they kind of buy into it it's very intuitive to use um, I see some of the power professionals that I work with at school doing a great job of modeling um, core vocabulary during during lunchtime, especially, and it makes my heart very happy. We want to incorporate AAC into daily routines and activities, like I, I suggested, and we also want to stay informed about new technologies and strategies that are out there because times change. I've learned a lot about this over the past couple of years, and my thoughts about this have really changed for the better, I hope. So here are some key rules to support AAC users. Like I mentioned, we want to teach a variety of communication functions and not just requesting. We want to model those words like hi and bye, stop, go, in, out. We want to model a variety of language with lots of different people. So not just with the speech therapists, but with the ABA therapists, with the OTs, with the PTs, with teachers, with mom, with dad, with siblings. We do want to prompt, and I want to talk about this more later, but I want to say that we don't want to prompt in the beginning. When you're teaching your child a new core vo vocabulary word, we really want to spend at least two weeks just modeling the words before we're making the child or expecting the child, I, not making, I scratch that, expecting the child to do anything. So we're going to talk about how to prompt later. We, like I said, we want to focus on those core words. We want to keep the AAC system readily available as much as possible. So one thing that is good about low-tech options is if you're, let's say your child has a high-tech speech generating device. They already have a tablet, but I also like to keep a screenshot of their tablet available as a backup. So I can't tell you how many times I've had students who have devices, but up. Uh, they forgot it at home or, oh, it's dead. We don't have the charger. Having a low tech option available to us as a backup is great because then our children aren't a stuck not having any form of communication for the day. And we want to we want to carry that around with us as much as possible. Don't leave it in the cubby, please. Take it with you to the gym. Take it with you to snack. Take it with you and model, model, model wherever you're going throughout your day. 
And one thing that I want to say, and this is huge, is believe that AAC, or I'm sorry, believe that children can use AAC and they will. I can't tell you how many times that I've kind of modeled AAC and thought, mm, I don't know about our core vocabulary. I don't know if this child is really going to be able to point. I don't know how this is going to go. And for highly motivating items and fun things, you'd be shocked at the children that can learn how to do this if you believe that they can. So here are some AAC teaching strategies. Inspire, don't require. I love this one, meaning we want to inspire communication, not force it. We want to have fun. We want to use highly motivating activities and that spark joy. So find things that children love to communicate about. Provide an immersive language experience. So like I was mentioning before, we want to, um, just like children and babies are exposed for their first year or two years of life before they even start using words at all, we're, we're modeling words for babies all the time without expecting them to do anything. We want to immerse children to AAC because this is a whole other form of language. We can't just expect children to know what these words mean. We have to model and teach them. This is a really, really big one. Model without expectation. So especially when you're immersing child children uh, in this system of language, we just want to model the words without the expectation that the child has to do anything. And for me, that has been a game changer and really like I could almost breathe a sigh of relief with with knowing I'm doing the right thing and, and not expecting the child to respond in that moment like, oh, they didn't they didn't do anything. I'm a failure. No, that's OK. Resp model without expectation. And how do we model? So we want to say the word as we point to it and show it. We want to use a natural and slow rate of speech and just show them. Don't test them. We once our children are starting to pick up, maybe start being exposed to these words and we're thinking that they're maybe starting to learn them, we want to pause and allow extra time to see if there are children will start to, to uh, demonstrate and may possibly point to some of these words. We want to avoid hand over hand assistance uh, as much as possible. We want to create bodily autonomy for our students and if we do use some kind of um, cueing, my suggestion is you as the adult, just kind of point and gesture to the word. And if they're not doing it, but you, you can maybe use an elbow prompt to try to guide their hand to the picture. Don't use forced hand over hand assistance. Learning AAC takes time and patience. This is not something that happens overnight. Please be patient. Try not to stress too much. That's the beauty of it is what I love about core vocabulary is there's no really wrong way. It's not like, oh, I did, with PECS, it's like, oh, I didn't follow phase 3B. I didn't do my four-step error correction. It's not, it's not so stressful. This is a nice way to learn language. Don't be stressed. Okay, so after we model these words for about two weeks before we expect our children to do anything, how can we then start to try to prompt our students to use vocabulary? So my first suggestion, so I'm gonna go from the least amount of support to the most amount of support on, on this chart. So my first suggestion, let's say we are, we have a bag of snacks, a goldfish in there and it's closed. We might just wanna tempt the child with the goldfish. Just tempt and pause, wait as long as 10 to 15 seconds, maybe. Then we can use body language like hmm, face, quizzical facial expressions. Now, next would be it use an open-ended question like, hmm, now what? Then maybe we can start to do some more prompting. So ask for a response like, show me, show me. We can then point to the symbol. Oh, you need to open, open. Then we can model on the device. So we would just point we would just kind of without touching if your child's on a speech generating device kind of gesture to the word open if they're still not doing it touch open oh, you want me to open your snack if they're still not doing it then maybe just a physical touch at the elbow 
But again, I, I try to stay away from physical touch as much as possible. This is a big one. Remember, learning AAC does not happen through osmosis. I think sometimes as soon as children get a device or some kind of form of AAC, um, I think we think that's just good. they're going to communicate like that. And it's, I want to take the device and like hold it up to their head and be like, it doesn't happen just by holding this device up to your head. You don't, you can't just learn AAC. And this is a quote that I, that I love from a very uh, famous AAC uh, professor. And this is what he said, just like a piano alone doesn't make a pianist nor a basketball make an athlete an AAC device alone doesn't make one a competent, proficient communicator. Those who rely on AAC strategies begin as AAC novices and evolve in competence to become AAC experts with support, encouragement, role models, and teaching strategies. So again, we don't just put a piano in front of a child and say, play Mozart. It takes time to teach them these strategies to improve. Okay, so you're on board. What steps do we need to start an AAC system? An assessment. So we want to work with our speech language pathologist to assess your child's communication needs. And we might be able to provide that here right on the spot, but it might need maybe a, uh, a specialist, an AAC specialist of some sort to do a more thorough evaluation with your child. And this happens a lot in the school systems of uh, getting an AAC specialist to uh, evaluate your child. Choose the right AAC system that best suits your child's abilities and preferences. Set goals, and this can be in their IEP or at Professional Therapy Associates. We want to talk about the goals that we're working on with families. We want to train and support families on how to use this. Hopefully, I did some training on this today. Implementation, integrate AAC into your child's daily routines and environments like I talked about. And again, there's going to be hiccups along the way. So we need to monitor and adjust as needed. And we are here to troubleshoot always, always, always. So here are some benefits of AAC. They enhance communication skills. They increase independence. They reduce frustration and challenging behaviors. And they improve social interactions and support academic and vocational success. So to sum all this up, AAC and core vocabulary opens doors for children with more complex communication needs. By embracing AAC and incorporating core vocabulary into your child's communication journey, you are empowering them to express themselves and participate more fully in the world around them. Again, all, these, all this takes patience, support, resources, and children can su successfully and use AAC. Believe that children can and they will with time and your support. And the last thing I wanted to share is just some really great uh, resources that I find uh, Rachel Madel. She is a speech language pathologist and AAC specialist. She has a fantastic website and I got a lot of this information from her website. She has tons of videos explaining a lot of these things that I mentioned today in more detail. She also has a podcast with a co-host called Talking with Tech Podcast, which covers so many topics. It's it's amazing. And she also has an Instagram called at Rachel Madel SLP, which shows some really great video examples and, and has some great educational resources. There's a website called Practical AAC see, with two A's, P-R-A-A-C, Practical AAC. That's great. And there's also a website called communicationcommunity.com that is fantastic. So I hope that opened your eyes to some things that we can do with AAC users. And I'm here to support you. Uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much. Take care. Good luck in your AAC journey.